Hey boys and girls, today's episode is installing the fuel selector. Pay attention, there will be a test. This is for a Piper Tri-Pacer 1953. When the uh, Tri-Pacer uh, was initially uh, introduced, it came with a three position uh, fuel switch. There was left and right and off. There was no option for both. And in later years, there's lots of mods to that. And specifically uh, in this airplane, there's two major STCs for the uh, fuel selector. Uh, the one we're going to go with today uh, is the Dakota Cub STC. There's another one that you kind of need to do if you're going to put seaplane doors on a tri-pacer. Typically, most people do this for uh, the uh, tail dragger conversion. But that's not my plans for this aircraft. I just wanted something simple. I just wanted the both option in there for this aircraft. And so I went with the Dakota Cup. So let's get started. All that's left now is actually getting the airplane and installing it apart. The first step is to take these fittings off, all three of them. They go back on to the new selector. Let me just say a word. A word. Maybe about 1500. About quality workmanship. As you notice, I'm not working on the uh, fuel selector right now. Some problems taking off the fittings the old fuel selector and why was it why why did I have trouble getting well let me just tell you somebody in the distant past on this aircraft <clears throat> put liquid weld on the brass fittings liquid weld and you know brass is not exactly it's not exactly, I mean, it's, it's chemically durable. I mean, you know, it'll withhold fuel for a long time. It'll withhold all sorts of chemical attack. But it's kind of on a soft side. So when you put liquid weld, but I persevered. I had my little emotional moment. I persevered. And then we'll get back to the process of putting on the fuel selector. But boys and girls, I'm not angry about it. Yes, I am. I'm not angry about it. Yes, I am. <laughs> don't, for the love of God, don't put liquid weld on brass fittings. Just, just no. Look, you know, one problem we have with, the, with these older airplanes, vintage aircraft, is that there's been a lot of maintenance done to them over a half a century. And you are always, always going to run into stuff that you're going to have to scratch your head and wonder why in the holy heavens somebody did whatever they did. I mean, I have seen some sketchy stuff before. I just, this is, but liquid weld on a brass fuel fitting? Mind boggles. So we're heading out to uh, Lloyd's Aircraft uh, Maintenance Services over in Bakersfield. See my good buddy Juan Zamora. Juan is like the Wikipedia of all things aviation. I swear to God, you could put a part in his hand and he could tell you what it is. He, he could even do better than that. You could put a 
apart in a paper bag and he can tell you what's in the bag. It's just amazing how good Juan is at finding all this stuff and knowing what it is and what works with what. He's just a fabulous guy. So my fuel selector uh, fittings should be ready or should be in. So I'm going over to uh, pick it up from Juan. So what we're going to do now is we're just making sure that all these uh, threads for the fittings has the wonderful easy turn lubricant on it. Have I bitched enough yet about all of the GB weld some jackass put on all this? Yeah, let's not talk about that. It's got threads. This goes on it. Don't put it up in there. Whatever you do, come on. And be sure to get all the connections. Because you want to do this right the first time. You don't want to take all this apart to regoup, rethread. I'll put some of that up there. It's a little bit too much out of the tube. Now that the new fuel selector's in, we can cover the gaping hole in the fabric, put the placard plate on, and finally the knob. Finally the knob. Do you see that the knob is on? The knob is on. Whew. Well, that's all for the drama for the fuel selector. That was more of a job than I expected it to be. The fuel line problems, the JB weld issue, let's just call it. But it all turned out, you know, you, you're always finding crazy little things with these older airplanes that you got to fix, you got to deal with, you got to make sure they're safe, and you got to make sure they're airworthy. And that is why, dear ladies and gentlemen, you have your AMP. You also may have graduated up to IA, and that's good for you. <laughs> but look, if you, uh, I want to encourage you guys right now to hit the like button. It's the big blue thumbs up thing. Like it. I want you to smash it. I want you to smash it like it's a cockroach in your dishwasher. <laughs> so put some umph into it. Have sincerity when you click that button. <laughs> you know? I think I want you to do is hit the subscribe button. If you like the channel and the content I'm producing, please hit the please hit the subscribe button. It is so important help keep this uh, channel going. It is absolutely vital. You guys do not know how much importance YouTube places on these little buttons. If you got any questions or thoughts, just leave those down in the uh, comments below. I will get around to answering them. Or if you found your own surprise in your tri-pacer, leave that down below too. I'll get to you and I'll answer that question. Pinky swear. So anyway, that's all for me. Remember, like it, love it, share it, subscribe, tell everybody, all your friends about it, post this video in your Facebook groups, bulletin boards. Don't be obnoxious. Oh, one last note, if you do subscribe this week, subscriptions are free. I'm not charging you guys a thing for it. So anyway, as always, I want you guys to do one thing, one thing only until the next video. If you're gonna do just anything, there's one thing I want you to do. Please fly safe.